Hey guys, back again with you. Got another uh, gun out of the collection I'd like to share with you. This is a Norinco Model 59 9x18mm Makarov. Essentially the 9x18mm Makarov, which is a Russian design. And then, like many Russian firearms, the uh, Chinese has uh, made copies of them through the manufacturer Norinco. Uh, this particular one, I, I've been told, is a little bit more difficult to find. Norinco didn't uh, make a whole lot of these. Uh, they were imported from Beta Arms um, from 1992 to about 1995, so there's only about three or four years worth of importing of these uh, particular sidearms. Um, it does have a Triangle 56 factory symbol on this one. And like I mentioned, it was imported by Beta Arms Incorporated, Los Angeles, California. Uh, the markings on this particular gun are on the uh, left side. We have Beta Arms Incorporated, Los Angeles, California. We have the serial number on the uh, slide portion of the gun. We have the serial number also on the lower portion of the receiver here, along with the Triangle 56 factory mark on there. Uh, you do have a crest in the Bakelite type plastic grips on this gun. That's the one complaint I have with this gun. It's not a very pleasant shooting gun, mainly because of the grips. And it's got a little bit of a pop, you know, the 9x18mm Makarov isn't the hugest round, but, you know, it's definitely got a little bit of pop to it, and with these types of grips, it, it can, can kind of hurt your hand after shooting 50 or 100 rounds through it, so, um, not the most pleasant shooting gun I've ever shot. It does have a safety on the left-hand side, as you can see here. The nice thing about the safety is it also does decock the hammer, as you can see it is an exposed hammer. Um, it does decock that, as you can see there, and it actually drops... Um, the firing pin, or the, uh, I should say the hammer, but it also blocks the uh, firing pin from uh, moving. It is a free-floating firing pin, and I'll show you that when we do the disassembly. Uh, but otherwise, uh, the safety down, you are able to load it, uh, so it is single-action, double-action uh, type revolver. Um, and like I said, once you do have it loaded, what you can do is you can chamber around and then safely decock it, which will allow you to carry it uh, with one round in the chamber, uh, with the safety off and the hammer, um, or the safety on and the hammer down, uh, which is a, a nice carry feature. On the bottom left hand side of the grip, there is a little uh, key ring sling there that you're able to uh, put a, you know, a chain on there or an attachment of some sort. Uh, you also do have the slide lock function on the left hand side here. And I'll show you that. It's uh, very, very similar to any other semi automatic pistol. You just push it up to lock the slide in the rearward position and then to release it just pushing it back down. <clears throat> Over on the left hand side uh, it does say made in China by Norinco and it says model 59 9 x 18 millimeter. It's got the uh, crest in the right hand side of the grip as well and as you can see it has the uh, ejection port and the extractor built right into the uh, top of the slide and it does also have a rear uh, kind of an unusual type uh, sighting system there. I'm not really sure if that's adjustable. I haven't done a whole lot of research on this gun mainly because it's uh, uh, just more of an investment piece type gun for me. Uh, but you can see it's got a, a nice sight adjustment there in the, or a nice uh, sight in the back and just more of a front post type sight in the front. Um, I'm not a real big fan of the sights to tell you the truth. When I was out to the range I didn't really feel that comfortable with them so uh, I'm sure it just takes some practice or getting used to. Uh, over on the right hand side of the gun that, that's really about it. On the bottom you have the magazine release and I can show you that here. You slide the, the magazine in and then to release it you kind of have to push that back, pull it back and that kind of releases it down. Uh, what we can do now is I'll go ahead and uh, break down the gun for you and show you a few things about it. Before I go into the breakdown guys I probably should give you a little bit of the, the background of the specs of the gun. It's uh, like I mentioned double action, uh, single action self-loading pistol. It has a blowback operation. Uh, the safety is a hammer block, slide lock, and decocking, and the firing pin is not secured as I mentioned, it's a free floating. So it's got a few different safety mechanisms in it. Uh, it is a 9 by 18 millimeter Makarov, very similar to the 9 millimeter, but they are different. Uh, and they, there have been some that have converted to the 380 ACP or at the 9 millimeter Kurtz. Uh, it is capacity 8 plus 1, uh, so it's got a 8 in the 
eight in the magazine, one in the chamber. Uh, it's got the fixed blade front and a dovetailed U-notch rear, and it is drift adjustable, I guess. Uh, the length of it is 6.34 inches. Weight is about 1.71 pounds, so it's a hefty gun. Uh, and you'll definitely be able to tell that when you pick it up. That was the one surprising part of this gun for me, was just the heft of it. Definitely can feel it in your hands, which, you know, in a gun like this, especially coming from China, when it's got some heft to it, you know it's uh, made with some quality machining and quality parts and uh, just some heavy, duty, heavy overall duty steel, which means it's going to last a long time. Um, the barrel is fixed. It's 3.83 inches long. Yeah, it's got a, a four... I believe a one and four groove twist, right hand twist. Um, the magazine release is on the heel of the gun and the total number of parts is 27 on this particular firearm. Okay guys, so for disassembly of this gun it's pretty straightforward. What you want to do is go ahead and put your safety down. We'll go ahead and cock the hammer back. It does need to be cocked back. Uh, what you can do then at this point is pull the trigger guard. As you can see it just kind of comes right down out of the top housing. You pull that down after you pull that down, what you can do is uh, go ahead and remove the whole top part of the slide here. And to do that, what we do is we go back, up, and off. So really easy actually if you think about it. It's uh, pretty straightforward. The harder part is getting it back on. I can do that to show you how to get it back off again. There we go. So what you can do is you go back, up, and off and frontwards. Uh, then you have a spring and the spring does come off when you reinstall the spring it's pretty easy because what you can do is the tight end does go on and then there is a loose end. You always want the tight end to go on first and it takes a little bit of pushing but that's how you know which way the spring goes on. Once you got that part that's really the uh, disassembly of the lower receiver. We can also take a screwdriver and in the back of the handle here there is a screw and you can remove the Bakelite grip here. I call it Bakelite, I really don't know if it is, I'm just kind of assuming it is. Um, that's what it feels like to me. But you can take that off and as you can see pretty uh, pretty simple. There's not a whole lot of parts there, like I mentioned 27 parts so that's a pretty pretty simple gun. Easy to manufacture. And we'll go ahead and put this Screw back in here. It's easier to work with with the uh, grips on it, that's for sure. Once you got the grips back on it, like I said, that's the whole disassembly. It does have that fixed barrel, so that doesn't come off. Uh, the slide itself, you can kind of see in there, there's really not a whole lot in there, not a whole lot of sliding parts or anything like that. Uh, we can actually remove, it is a free floating firing pin in there, we can actually remove that uh, firing pin by uh, moving the safety into the upwards position and then keep moving it forward all the way up until it's 90 degrees. You can actually keep going with this firing pin and remove or the safety lever and remove it completely by going over the 90 degree mark further that way, uh, which is possible. So you can remove that. And then with that removed, you should be able to just kind of tap the back and the firing pin just kind of slides right out, right out the back of it. So here's your free floating firing pin. Uh, to put it back in, it's a, you know just a more or less playing around, but uh, there is a kind of a notchy type looking area on the uh, portion of here. And what we'll do, I don't know if I'm going to be able to get a close up view of this for you. Kind of hard to tell, but um, once you put it back in here, you'll kind of be able to tell the way it needs to go back in because of the way it lines up and everything uh, with the safety mechanism. So once you get the firing pin back in, we'll put this safety mechanism back all the way in rotate it forward. Uh, once you got it back into the essentially the 90 degree position, push it back down and then back down into the the uh, position there. And that should be holding your your firing pin in there. So if you got it back into this type of position and you're falling, your firing pin falls out, you got an issue, you didn't put it back in correctly. Ultimately though, it's pretty easy to figure out. Not that difficult. Uh, you should be able to s turn your slide like that or kind of wiggle it back and forth and hear that ding, 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 ding. Uh, that's your firing pin going back and forth, being that's a free floating. Much like any other free floating firing pins, if you don't hear that noise, your firing pin isn't free floating like it should be, and you probably got an issue. 
Uh, but overall, guys, that's it for disassembly. I mean, it's really easy, and that's probably one of the highlights of this gun and one of the reasons that the Russian army used it for, you know, 40 or 50 years or however long they used it as an official sidearm, mainly because of the ease of the use, ease of the uh, breakdown and maintenance of it, and uh, the, the overall reliability of it with the simple moving parts. You know, the Russians are known for that, you know, exclusively with the AK-47 as being one of the more uh, pertinent example, examples, but... Uh, just a great, great firearm. The only, the only uh, um, cons I have about it was that Bakelite handle. And, you know, they do actually produce uh, aftermarket uh, grips that are rubberized, which would make that much, uh, much more comfortable to shoot. So uh, there is options for that, that particular issue. Uh, to get it back on, like I mentioned, the, uh, the tight end of the spring you want to put on first. At that point, then, just go ahead and slide your spring into the front of the muzzle there and... This is the hard part, and if you got slippery hands or your gun's got a nice greasy uh, application on it, or wa uh, waxy application, this is going to be tough for you. Uh, but otherwise, it's just a more or less getting it all the way up and up and around back onto the original position. If you can do that, let's see, my hands are getting kind of slippery here. I'm going to have to grab a rag, I think. Maybe I can do that better with a rag. There we go. So you can grab a rag. That makes it a little bit easier. Kind of get it up and around and down. Once you get it down, it should kind of just slide all, all the way forward. Uh, the trigger guard, the trick to the trigger guard, because if you pull it up and down, you're like, what the heck, how do I get that back in there? Trigger guard is actually, if you pull it this way towards the muzzle of the gun, it'll snap right back into position. At that point, what I'll do is I'll check my safety to make sure my safety lever is working and it decocks the hammer. It does. Perfect. So I'll put the safety back on, cock the hammer, we'll pull the trigger. The trigger's working. That's uh, working. We'll go ahead and pull the trigger all the way, and that's working. I'll put the safety back up. We'll put the hammer down. We'll test the slide. Test the slide lock. That works. And then we'll go ahead and put that like that. So we're all set. Everything works. That was uh, real simple, like I mentioned, as far as the dis disassembly and reassembly of the gun. Cleaning it is real breeze. Uh, overall, great little pistol. If you guys have any questions, feel free to let me know. Otherwise, I hope this helps you out. And uh, thanks for watching.